Dear Venerable Sisters, Dhamma Friends, we are going to start the Dhamma talk today. So you may all settle down for the talk and give the consent with three times Sadhu Sadhu Sadhu. Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasse. Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasse. Namo Tasse Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasse. Katancha Bhikkha Ve Asangaroti. Ida bhikkave bhikku chakkuna rupandiswa piya rupe rupe adhimuchyati apya rupe rupe vyapajyati anuppatitti sakaya satissa viharati paritta cheta sathiti <coughs> Dear Venerable Sisters, then my friends, this is yet another quotation from the same discourse known as Chappanaka Sutta, the Buddha is proceeding further, taking that the first example, how a wise person or bhikkhu or a meditator taking the message of the Buddha and he leads the path. First, we'll take little time to get the just summary of the yesterday's episode and then it will be helpful for us to understand the, the preceding parts. The first, the Buddha mentioned uh, a person with wounds and feastering going to a thorny and swampy jungle and each and every moment he is going to uh, take along this thorny jungle, he said so much of irritation. Because the jungle is very, very harsh, he has to creep through. So, so much so he is having so the wounds and irritations, it will be double fold whenever he is moving. Exactly the way when a person goes to a village and associate other people, if that particular person is with no much of skillfulness in his awareness on the mindfulness on the body, he or she also will be irritated by the remarks and the criticism of the people right now so that he has to understand whatever he sees, whatever he hears, feel is going to give friction. So that is a kind of a restraint he has to think about and uh, equally he may understand I get irritated, I get this friction because of my lack of restraint. So I must understand that and make up mind <clears throat> to do this restraint. So, explaining that much, then the Buddha take two parts. One thing is what, is, what does it mean by a lack of restraint? And then give the recommendation, knowing that everything, pros and cons, advantages and the disadvantages, how much one must appreciate the restraint of faculties. So the particular phrase that we uh, quoted today is about what is lack of restraint. So we have to understand that through our common sense, in our day-to-day understanding, and then if you wish to have uh, improvement along the awareness or along the mindfulness on your body, awareness on the body, on body, then you may get a real picture, background, why one must 
restrain one's faculties. So, to give a little bit of a detailed incident, the Buddha mentioned, when a one person is about, when a person seeing something, when a visual object avenue, visual object becomes face to face with. If your mind is not well re restrained, or we can say if your mind is not much mindful, or if you are not diligent enough, you will be delighted or you will be glad with the uh, beautiful things. You will be pleasant. You are glad and happy with the pleasant things. You will be unhappy uh, with the unpleasant things because you do not know under such circumstances how to take the reference point of your body and not to not let the mind to take you for a ride with the pleasant and unpleasant and how to anchor your attention, <clears throat> your mindfulness on your body, on your corporeality. If you have not taken this restraint and will worst, definitely your mind will be carried away, wander away by dislikings and disliking, then onward you are almost like pricky creeping through a thorny jungle. So if you can understand this background, then onward we can relate that into our sitting meditation in a full-time residential meditation retreat. Or how can we relate that to our walking meditation and how can we relate that to our day-to-day -day activities in the day-to-day uh, -day, day -day activities under the retreat atmosphere and furtherance you can extend it to your day-to-day -day life back at home. So whenever you see and how much the object you see, tend to take you away, taken you for a ride, and how much you are going to indulge that particular scene, either in pleasant way or unpleasant way. I usually take the example of this walking meditation, because in the walking meditation, <clears throat> we do it with open eyes. So therefore, uh, it is much natural than in the sitting. Sitting also you can do, you can apply the same. But let us take, in our walking meditation, first and foremost, you have to understand what does it mean by walking meditation, or what is the mindfulness in walking meditation, and uh, if you get the basic instructions when you are doing walking meditation, you try your best to keep the attention within this walking posture. So in a, in a comparative way, you are being asked to compare what is the experience of sitting posture and contrast to in contrast to that what is the experience of walking meditation. Now, while talking and while I am talking and while you are listening, you know what is the sitting experience is. You can feel what are the touching points on the ground and that verify that I am not walking, that I am not stand still, that I am not lying down, I am sitting, because of this touch. So likewise, suppose you now about to get up and go, and there while you are walking, you can compare. This is a sitting experience, or touch of sitting, with compared with the walking, how the souls are experiencing the substrata or the crowd. And when you are practicing 
diligently, vigilantly, uh, the experience of touch by your soul, the left le leg touch and the right leg touch. There is a, so much of aspects and facets. You can feel the touch, whether it is touching the whole soul or it is starting the touching from the heel and gradually goes through the arch and end up with the toes. And then how that the touching or pressure points change into the next heel and then passing towards the toes either in the external margin or inner side of your soul. So never they are the same. Never they are equal in two people. So much of detail. In that sense, for the sake of theoretical understanding, the Buddha is the only person can walk balance. All the others are walking somewhat imbalance. But as far as you are not paying the attention, you feel like or you believe that you are walking balance unless otherwise you have a wound or kind of a prick on your leg or any kind of a disease, you feel like walking balance, but if you, in the walking meditation, if you are really observing continuously, you can see, just like your left hand and the right hand, they both are not equally exercised when you are doing any work, handicraft or physical work. Left-handers give more weight to the left hand and right hand is more idly. And the right-handers, when they are working manually, they use the right hand and left hand is not so uh, active. Exactly the like in the legs, if you are a football player, you know which leg is coming forward if you have to give a kick. And naturally the body gets the balance and when you are kicking, always kicking with one particular leg, the other leg is not. So if you do to, if you have to do hop, step and jump, you uh, jump happens exactly with one particular leg and that is characteristic of that particular person. So when you are walking, imagine on a flat ground without any bends and you are not challenging from the, the ground or roughness or any kind of thing. If you are walking on a flat, that aspect is fixed. So you can see how the legs are walking and how many steps you can continue to know that I am walking, not sitting. I am walking, I am not standing. I am walking, I am not lying down. And there you can see, in a few steps time, mind starts to wander off and it is quite ab it is not an abnormal thing. It happens so again and again with more so much of patience. You bring back your attention to the steps. So when you practice it uh, one or two days time, you will learn the art how to increase the number of consecutive steps you can account for left sole, right sole or left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg. If you wish, you can note it, label it and continue. When compared to a toddler, the young girl or boy who learn how to walk and you see how the balance from the lying down position or standing, sitting position, get up with the help of a rail or some other object and wish to walk without much of a support and tottering and then again falling down and again get up and again falling down. So likewise it learn how to keep a number of steps from here to there and it's a very, very interesting thing for the mother to observe the young child 
learning how to walk. Exactly now you are a newly born baby like or toddler and learning how to walk without letting the wandering minds to happen and just like the mother looking at the child, cute child and observing day by day how the child is learning one to two, two to three and uh, take few steps like you are, when you are monitoring you must be very very sympathetic joy with your body and you must be very compassionate with yourself one step left right left right so one day you may understand you can walk eight to ten steps and again wander off bewildering daydreaming thinking fantasizing seeing hearing other sensation of the body everything happens but still you can do 10 and then you keep the target as a 12, 50. Like you can take the one stretch for example and when you go to the other end when you are turning it's a challenge your mindfulness goes down and tendency to see, tendency to hear, tendency to feel other thing naturally happens. So therefore I would like to take this example of a person with fair amount of experience with this walking meditation in outdoor walking path. At the end, when he is turning, suppose that he observes a special kind of a bird or butterfly or a flower and now immediately you becoming a seer rather than a walking person. And when that happens in our normal jargon, we, this, we become unmindful, mind wandered off, and then moment you come back to the leg, left leg, right leg again, you know it's a lost. Because without any prior notice, the mind is jumping from the walking to see. And when you are walking, your attention must be on the sensitivity of your leg. Kaya Pasadi, Kaya Pasada, the, the tactile sensation of your soul. And when you are observing, no more you are in the leg, but with your eye sensitivity, you see shapes and color instead of tactile sensation. So when this, hap this shift from the tactile sensation to the shapes and colors happens so swiftly, and you become unmindful about your main task and sometimes you may indulge the seeing object. It's a special kind of a bird. It is only you can find in the Perth. So it is wonderful. Or a special kind of a flower. Or a special kind of a butterfly or plant, whatever may be. You take the light and the object is pleasant. Or sometimes you may see another negative thing and then you become unpleasant and with that understanding some or the other you come back to your walking position and again you take a pace to the other end and there also you can see when you are changing the posture changing the trend when you are turning you are more vulnerable to jump into hearing or seeing <clears throat> or other tactile sensation or the other parts of the body or wind movements or whatever may be. So we take this seeing object uh, to make it parallel with the example of the Buddha. Whenever something pleasant happens, you become happy, pleasant experience. Whenever unpleasant thing confronted with, you become unpleasant and both the time you miss the bus. You are not with your leg. You are no more uh, feeling the tactile sensation in your soul. And in this situation, whenever you are to observe that mind is wandering off, it is seeing the shapes and the color 
of the seeing object and that means your mind is not well established or steadfast mindfully on the soul or the leg instead the eye take the opportunity and you become a seer and whatever you see pleasant or unpleasant happy or unhappy you miss the bus you are no more walking person under such circumstances the according to the early experience if you are carried away and storytelling and continuing and proliferating thinking about the pleasant object or you may be disheartened and unpleasant and fantasize uh, thinking in the negative way on the unpleasant object object that is what the buddha says you are now creeping in a thorny jungle with so much of wounds and you do not know how to take refuge of your bodily posture and bring the attention back to the soul so much called your mind is not well restrained and the, now the task is how to take this opportunity and understand how much you are restrained and how much you are unrestrained lack of restraint restrain you can see when you are walking at the in the path feel you are better off than yesterday you can keep 10 20 steps unbroken mindfulness steadfast mindfulness you can see more detail of the sole the heel the arch the toes and how the pressure change from one leg to the other all the you can train how that much you are you are straight but at the turning point how much you are vulnerable how the eye ear and the other sense organs take the opportunity and take you for a ride and sometimes without knowing you are indulging it uh, with liking and disliking so much so you regret so that is a part you have to restrain and they are <clears throat> if you are not a person with already familiar with mindfulness if you are not a person with certain amount of restrain at your fingertip level you are not suitable to understand this challenge and that is what the we call the commoner who person who has not exposed to this dhamma not taken any uh, effort no any success in their at hand so they do not understand that while walking the wandering mind happen through seeing hearing us uh, other kind of thing is a, is an irritation is a prick is a friction is a uncultivated mind not much developed mind but for example when you are in driving seat and if you look and here and there the day you met up with a serious accident there of course you have to accept it you are not supposed to see here and there you are supposed to look through the windscreen but the mind is running up and down ultimately after the accident you know then it's a, it's a civil case it's a you have to go to the police and all the kind of thing but here you take this in a very subtle way you ask your mind you ask your body keep track with your left leg and right leg and try to walk and while walking see how much you are restrained how many steps you can go how many seconds you can go how many minutes you can go without wandering off without daydreaming and fantasizing and sometimes some people may experience this distraction while walking in the uh, pace also but naturally each and every one get caught in while they are, you are turning back when you are turning suppose that i take the opportunity and you see visual object and imagine in the midst of sea if you can note that you are not in the primary object this is the point you can see restraint and lack of restraint whenever the uninstructed person whenever uh, 
the uninstructed yogi to understand now I am not on the primary object but on a distracted object it's a reason to be regret it's a moral shame and the fear can happen so now the Buddha come and say of course you are not in the tactile sensation of the leg but you are in the eye but you know it now you are supposed to be in the left leg you are supposed to be a walking meditator but you are a seer that very knowing right red handed you are not in the leg you are not on the body sensitivity but with the eye sensitivity it's a huge great knowledge an uninstructed person become regret, regrettable and consider shameful fearful therefore he get bewildered he don't know what to do and what not to do under such circumstances after long practice and long listening to dhamma and long determination and endurance and with the steadfast mindfulness the day you understand i am supposed to be with the leg tactile sensation but i am not in it i am in seeing but i know verily this is not my domain i have already appointed domain so therefore regret or inferiority or tension or frustration is bewildering leave that aside that is none of my business how quickly i can go back to the my primary object my domain Le- less and less regret less and less uh, fear and shame you have more efficiency more clarity to go back to your primary object but it it is some total of all of your experience you would have done mindfulness without distraction would have done uh, you have heard about that there is a danger of seeing hearing smelling touching and you must understand an instructed person is usually get disheartened and moral shame and the fear can happen but it is useless instead what you have to do is next time when you are red handed no i am in the other domains i am in the risky place i am in a dangerous place so therefore if you my restraint must be to come back to my leg and then if these all four steps are aligned there is no no restriction there is nothing preventing from you to come from that seeing to touching but the distracting thing is the regret distracting thing is that you are under estimation and inferiority you feel and if you consider this as this part is your moral resp- responsibility you are totally wrong this is not moral restraint this is a kind of a concentration restraint that you have to do upon the moral restraint you have done and how much you must be with theoretical understanding or book knowledge how much you have uh, you must go prepared how much you must not get regret or uh, underestimate and they are the moment you understand now you are in a bifurc path this is my this is not my domain this is my domain and if i i am not now with the regret so my duty my restraint my concentration restraint is to bring the attention back to the uh, your leg or so to say your tactile sensation then you see there is nothing blocking and whenever you become successful there are four steps theoretically you have to understand you have to red handed you must know i am not in my domain and it has happened as an achievement not something to be regretful 
and then don't hide it don't suppress it don't underestimate it and that is called vivarati you have to clearly you have to see this is happened without my volition i have no any intention to stop walking and look into something visual or verb uh, uh, sound it happened so therefore regretting indicate or regretting hints that you are taken this responsibility of a conscious decision like it is not a conscious decision this is the way unrestrained mind that is the way narrow minded mind so now you understand don't hide it don't es- try to escape it take into grant and see how uh, shortly how quickly how straight you can come back to the primary object and when you come back to the primary object primary object never reject you so always welcome and the day you report it i knew that i was not in the lake i was not suppressing it or i am not regretting i wanted to clearly understand this is not an intentional thing so therefore i can disclaim it i can disavow it now i came back i started with the left and the right and the left and the right is really welcome my mindfulness if you can explain these four stages then that day onward you will how you will learn the art how to make your defilement null and void otherwise you will be de- accumulating accruing defilements you regret and you feel helpless you feel it is my duty moral duty to regret and say i am not a good meditator i can't keep back pace with uh, turning points can i walk continuously around the world so that i will not be distracted that is what the people think but the buddha gave this uh, walking path is a straight path at the end you have to turn they are definitely this vulnerability is there the day you go prepared prepared me to my theoretical understanding you must understand the rational knowledge or, or, or deductive knowledge this is a furtherance of our exercise research and there you have to be prepared when you go to the turning point now this is the point i have to be double fold with my mindfulness and if the mind is going to change the track from the tactile sensation to the visual object c don't regret don't hide it don't try to escape it don't complain yourself you see this is the nature this is not my mind this is the human mind why should i regret in personalize this human mistake so that is the way you reason it out you you deduce it in a such a way because i am a follower of the buddha and i have certain amount of mindfulness now i am on the next um, exercise and they are while turning even the mind is bewildered daydreaming fantasizing and thinking about the bird or butterfly or whatever may be but leave it aside see possibilities to come back to your the neutral object verifiable object and then you will understand more and more you be with the left leg right leg due to its neutral nature mind is quite bored mind is more monotonous mind feel insecure in left leg and right leg so it is about to jump into more lucrative more colorful more eventful object so whenever you see this kind of a tendency in your mind specifically the not much well trained mind you see if you are not a meditator if you do not have moral restraint and upon that uh, concentration restraint what the kind of thing happen is there any kind of a agenda of our mind trend no one can govern it 
no one can control it only thang, thing we do is hiding it and regretting and become inferior telling mind is such but instead the buddha says when you confronted with that kind of a thing you have to understand what is lack of training lack of restraint and what is restraint and there if you are ready to take this challenge when your mind is about to run when your mind is wandering don't much worry about that be aware mindfulness on normal left leg and right leg is your first experience first exercise and whenever you are successful it is much 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 efficiency so much amount of uh, radical reflection you must have to be mindful when the mind is not on the your domain when the mind is not on the secure place when the mind is in the vulnerable place that mindfulness is very robust it's adventurous so they are who unless otherwise you train mindfulness in the uh, uniform exercise or one particular posture you are not qualified to be mindful in posture junctions from walking to see walking to hear so attention at the fork in the posture junction is just like in your driving when you are taking a highway there is no much of a driving skill is necessary because you know your speed you can keep the track and go but if you are to take an exit there you have to be very careful because you have to follow the sign road signs and take into the proper track and when you are turning to the uh, there you have to be aware this is a place where other accident can take place and there whenever you are to take a by road be attentive be prepared exactly like while walking in a straight path fairly you may be good enough but when you are turning you have to understand you have to go prepared you have to understand so much of restraint i i am happy but here there is a special challenge when in the posture junction when is jumping from touching tactile sensation to this uh, seeing hearing kind of thing <coughs> if you are going to take this as your mistake that is what you what does it mean by your ignorance it is your not your mistake because it is not a conscious decision only the volitional action action willful action goes to the accounts of this karmic accumulation if it is something happening it is none of your business it is something happened to you but still untrained mind regret upon that untrained mind become sad and depressed but if you take if you have taken this kind of a challenge and still not to become depressed and sad but uh, don't worry about that what happened and what are the possibilities to bring the mind back to the kaya anupassana back to your body and that there's a one advanced training you have to practice otherwise by changing the shifting the attention take and delight of a pleasurable object and take an uh, sad or unhappy with the undelight object going to give going to take some kind of karm accumulation or karmic accumulation so ultimately you have to suffer knowing that if you can take the benefit of your already developed object of mindfulness that is left leg and right leg is ever welcoming you ever ready when you come back you can see you can start again left leg and right leg and you learn the art how to do away with which accumulation of new karmic forces new uh, regret or tension or frustration so it says your effort the first thing first part of your effort in meditation anuppannana papakana akusarana dhammana na uppadaya you must have your effort not 
to arouse and arisen defilements to arise, arouse and disturb your stream of consciousness. So whenever you do it, it never you can do just by book knowledge. You never you can practice it with something happened to you. Or you will never practice it, something yet to happen. You have to practice it under your very nose, red handed. And there you can see your early training and early book knowledge, early discussions, early uh, your appointment of your primary object and mistakes and uh, still not to give up but to carry on. Then the day you take the mind, take the mindfulness diligently and vigilantly back to your left leg and right leg, you can see before the seeing phenomena and the after the seeing phenomena both my mind is mindful that you can verify. If that is true between these two mindfulness whatever happen goes without any defilement. They become null and void. So this is the formula you to understand or you have to uh, restrain not belongs to the moral restraint, this is the concentration kind of restraint or wisdom kind of restraint. So how much you go prepared, how much uh, you, you must learn the art of main thing is not to worry. Simply speaking, main thing is not to worry. Worrying mind is the one bewildering and disturbing the whole stream of consciousness. And if you are going to think this as morality, or this is as your moral responsibility, then you have to correct it by listening, theoretical understanding, book knowledge. The Buddha very clearly indicated is an advanced kind of training. So therefore, don't just simply put into the dustbin telling that this is a kind of a unavoidable kind of defilement. You have to tell it is not unavoidable, it is avoidable if you are skillful. Venerable Sariputta, he says, Pamade na kampati iti satibala. That is the way he put into a uh, very technical way in the book of discrimination. When he is talking about this mindfulness gathering momentum and become skillful, he says the, he defined the power, power of mindfulness. When the mindfulness becomes powerful, it is even the mind is bewildered, even it is negligent, that particular person is not regretting, he is not worried, he is not frustrated, he is thinking what, what is the best thing to do to recover the mind. If you are frustrated or if you are de re depressed, you, are, you, you will never think in, a, think in a, the productive way, your whole way of thinking will be negative to yourself and inferiority and regret can set in. Instead, you have to have, there is a way of restraint. Main thing is to bring back the attention to your main object, primary object. And they are, when you come back, you have to verify, am I sure that I am walking, not sitting, not seeing, not hearing, not stand still, not lying down. And easily that can be verified. When you were verified, you are the gift you get it for the new year gift is the between this before seeing and after seeing. If you know both of them are mindful, the gift is by seeing and shifting of your attention, no defilements. That is with the way you can make the defilements null and void or possible defilements null and void, and that cannot be achieved without trial and error. Without, you cannot achieve it on the spot, red-handed. If you go prepared, this is restraint, this is lack of restraint, and how can I advance, how can I proceed? And that kind of a preparedness is called diligence. That is called vigilance. That is called the under the nose experience. So whatever the way the Buddha teaching you, Whatever the way Venerable Sariputta is teaching you, if you all 
if you have no uh, the preparedness and the courage and the challenge or risk loving kind of thing you will ever expect no scenery things must be there not there should not have any object to see or anything to sound any any sound objects then only i can do walking meditation like that is what the normal people do so in a center like this we of course give as much as possible opportunities to walk without much of a much encounter with seeing hearing but that is to start your mindfulness that is to get the the the, the bare attention to train your mindfulness and once it is trained and uh, you must uh, advance with little bit of challenge this object that object that sound this sound everything available how to maintain your stream of consciousness without worrying and keep up keep up to your foot and still uh, you can bring that and bring the mindfulness when you take and to the turning point and when you turn fairly you can see the continuity of the mindfulness if you can see it that is the way we can say your diversification of the mindfulness you're going through posture junctions or going through different objects objects are changing sure but it is not necessarily or mindfulness must not be broken necessarily if you are advancing further therefore this restraint uh one has to accept it is not for the beginner's job so you have to have certain amount of practice but each and every sitting walking meditation session we have to start like a beginner at the beginning you have to gain your familiar your seasoned mindfulness to a certain extent then only with the advantage of this bear attention develop mindfulness you have to go through this seeing hearing smelling tasting touching and other kind of thing and if you do not know where to find where is your refuge where is your primary object where is your pointed domain then you are lost you have no any aim so therefore if you have if you have prepared mind that means you must know whenever the mind wandered off day dreaming fantasizing we are to bring the mind then place or your reference point or your benchmark or your primary object then your main thing is to without worrying how quickly how swiftly you can bring back the attention to your body in the walking example to the soul so that means you have you have your theme of your life you have the cumulative mindfulness and today in this walking session you may be successful tomorrow don't expect that to happen again you have to start as a beginner again mind will be wandering off again mind will be taken you for a ride and again you may be thinking and storytelling and fantasizing can happen and don't get, don't get discouraged again start like a beginner and go prepared and whenever it is happening uh, with your preparedness if you can secure maybe little after little bit of wandering and you secure and come back to your primary object then you can see that by doing practice practicing repetitively again and again you learn the art not to let it bewilder too much or wandering too much quickly your sensitivity increase something wrong somewhere you understand now i am not the walking not i am not on the the tactile sensation i am in seeing this is something related to the interoception in the neuroscientists they explain mind is naturally whatever the task you do multitasking and stressful and all the kind of thing mind by default come back and say i am hungry i am sleepy 
I wish to go to the washroom, like there's a, there's a kind of a, a reference. It, it is inbuilt in our mind. In this case, we are making use it in an uh, efficient way. Occasionally, we uh, cross-check, is this my secure domain or am I watering off? So more and more you do it, and naturally, mind trained into that. Uh, when and where you cross-check your bodily posture, it is proprioception. Mind is checking, even in your inner sleep, there is a kind of a system to check whether you are in an awkward position or to adjust your posture. These are some uh, default uh, meant uh, the neuro reflections. So in meditation, you may, we make use it in an efficient way. So therefore, when the neuroscientists are doing it, they come across some kind of a rediscovery or redefinition of the same formula the Buddha proclaimed 2,600 years ago. And when they see the relationship, uh, the, the scientific neurological discoveries, and what the Buddha says, it's amazing. Because the, when the Buddha practicing and experimenting and teaching and everything, no laboratories did it by refining his own mind and repetitive application. So a person like me, I admire how the Buddha made up his mind to teach such a subtle thing to this multitasking kind of human folk. No one is prepared for this kind of thing because we are so much of uh, suppressed or pressurized with duties and responsibilities and this and that. So, uh, so unless otherwise you do it in a pure way, just do walking for the walking and then train, bear attention and understand how to keep the track with, without changing the posture, so boring. It is so much boring. And on top of that, how to take, carry forward this already gained mindfulness in the posture junction? No one will think, even after you gain certain amount of theoretical understanding, even if you wish to have deductively or inferentially wish, you see, what a coincidence, someone to understand, I am a person already appointed with walking, now I am seeing, main thing is not to worry, see how quickly I can bring that consciousness from seeing consciousness to tactile consciousness. So there you can understand ways and means to bring the attention from this seeing to the tactile sensation, we all, equally we have same potential, same possibility. If you are looking to that, if you are looking in this angle, we are with the same potential. But if you are not looking from that angle, if uh, due to your regret, due to your moral uh, kind of a regret thing, I, I can't meditate because seeing, seeing things are there, hearing things are there, how can I maintain my mindfulness like? You will never think in this radical way, radical reflection or in a, in a against the grain kind of a reflection. And whenever your mind is ready for that experiment, we all have the equal amount of tools, equal amount of uh, potential and possibility, there we come to the common ground, the humanity. As far as you are thinking, I am dep uh, deprived of that and this and I must have this and that, that all make you inferior, all make you uh, uh, benumbed. You will never explore into your uh, neurobics and ways and means once you uh, taken it and practice and uh, you, whenever you are to experience such a thing 
you see that potential will never bloom unless otherwise you put into practice. Putting into practice is also not a single fault thing. Theoretical understanding, discussions, trial and error, bear attention and your preparedness, everything must come. And that is the point we can say our whole brain is working. Usually it is not the case. We are in a rut. We are only expect this and that. So that lead to uh, regret rather. So therefore, even such a regret happen, don't worry, it won't make much of a permanent damage. You can be refresh yourself, have a radical reflection, and whenever a mishap or unexpected thing happen, it's a golden opportunity for you to advance your mindfulness or make use of your body or awareness on your body as a body so that your mind will be much restrained, much protected. And you will learn the art, not let the unreasoned defilements to arouse, and then your mindfulness is gaining uh, so much of efficiencies, and uh, it is a, it's, a, it's a kind of a catalytic effect. The moment you experience it, you feel like put that into again and again into practice. So each and every difficulty now become each and every uh, raw material for your new experiment. The world become a laboratory, the fully equipped laboratory. Your mind is a fully equipped with this, all the tactics. Unless otherwise it is being catal catalyzed, catalytical effect, you will never think, you will never see the potential. So I hope with the experience you gain through this uh, mindfulness and with these talks you will radically reflect instead of complaining about the outside stimuli or distraction you may learn how to make use of them and make your mindfulness more efficient and use your body or posture as your pivotal point or, or reference point or benchmark and do away with with this unreasoned defilement. With that remark, I would like to sum up the today's talk. Thank you very much for listening.